Am I saying that SWR doesn't exist? It's a myth? No. The myth concerns what happens to reflected power resulting from a mismatch at the antenna, which creates standing waves. Now, we all know that if you have an antenna that does not have an impedance of 50 ohms, there will be reflected power. Now, the myth is that this reflected power is lost. It is not lost. Power is never lost. It has to go somewhere. It's a law of physics. Now, here's the truth. If your transmitter puts out 50 watts and the SWR is about 5.8 to 1, <gasps> terrible. That means 25 watts is reflected back to the antenna tuner, which every station needs. That 25 watts is then bounced right back to the antenna, which is bounced back to the tuner. Now, this goes on and on like a ping pong game as long as the transmission lasts. So, if your transmitter is putting out 50 watts and the reflected power is 25 watts, that means the forward power, the power going from the antenna tuner to the antenna is now 75 watts. They combine 50 watts plus the reflected power of 25 watts. Now, this is known as reflection gain. But that 25 watts is then reflected back again. Now, the end result is that the full transmitter output power of 50 watts is delivered to the antenna. It's radiated. You don't lose anything of any significance. So, SWR in a coax line in the amateur HF bands doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is that your transmitter sees a low SWR because otherwise modern transceivers reduce power to prevent damage to the output stage. That's what an antenna tuner is for. All it does is make the transmitter happy, and that's important. Well, what about the characteristic loss of various coax cables? Now, notice I just made reference to HF frequencies. In VHF and UHF frequencies, coax cable loss becomes significant unless you have a short transmission line. But on the HF ham and CB bands from 160 meters up to 10 meters, Cable loss caused by a mismatch is so small, it is insignificant. So, if you're a CB operator, for example, and the SWR is 10 to 1, it doesn't matter as long as you have an antenna tuner to keep the transmitter happy. Your signal will sound just as loud as if the SWR was 1 to 1. Now, this is especially so since the transmission line in your car or truck will be no longer than, what, 10 feet? The loss in a 10-foot piece of RG58 is so small, it's of no consequence. At 11 meters, uh, the inherent loss of RG58 is about 2 dB per 100 feet. So at 10 feet, <laughs> the loss is a fraction of a dB. It's nothing. So, you know, it's really a shame to see CBRs and hams spending hours trying to get their SWR flat when it does no good. You'd be better off spending time improving something else, like, uh, like getting a better antenna or going for a walk. All right, here's a ham radio transceiver tuned to the 80 meter band. Here's my power output meter. And it goes from the transceiver to this automatic antenna tuner. From the antenna tuner, I have it hooked up to a SWR meter, which also shows forward and reflected power. And then the SWR meter is hooked up to the antenna. So... Let's demonstrate this. I'm going to put out uh, 20 watts and watch the meter. There we go, 20 watts being put out by the transceiver. 
And because I have the uh, SWR or the uh, antenna tuner in circuit and activated, let's look at the SWR. Okay, power output's on again. It's flat here at the transceiver. So this is a very happy little transceiver because it's seeing a perfect SWR. Okay, turn that back to power. Okay, uh, now let's see what happens at the SWR meter after the antenna tuner. Okay, I'm going to again uh, activate the transmitter so it's putting out 20 watts. But now note this scale here, which reads forward power. Well, it's putting out 30 watts. Do you see that? And look at the SWR, where the two, uh, two meter veins cross about three to one. Where is that extra 10 watts coming from? Well, let's look at the reflected power. That's the other scale here. Right there. It's putting out, it's got almost 10 watts reflected power. So that's where the that's where the power is coming coming from. So the total forward power is 30 watts, 20 watts from the transmitter plus 10 watts reflected power. Now I know that was not a, a highly accurate uh, laboratory grade experiment, but it makes the point that reflected power is added to source power and transmitted back to the antenna. It is not lost. Now, here are some references that I would encourage you to read. John Fielding, ham radio call sign ZS5JF, has a very technical and rather long PDF online called SWR, The Persistent Myth. He's basically proving what I've been saying here. Also, there's a compilation of writings by antenna engineer and ham whose uh, pen name is Kurt Sterna called Kurt Speaks Out. Look at his article called Kurt Strikes Back. He strikes back at guys who say reflected power is lost. Also the writings of uh, another antenna engineer and ham, Walter Maxwell. Um, look for his articles, another look at reflections. You'll see, I'm not just making all this up. Now, I, I welcome any comments, questions, or corrections that you might have. But if you say, I'm wrong, I don't know what I'm talking about, just be prepared to prove it. Well, thanks for watching.